Hi all, uh, just um, a quick one for you today, a uh, live video. Um, we'll probably get off on YouTube at some point as well, but this one's uh, just for those out there that are lovers of our belly pork. So, um, we've got a bit of a rep reputation for a belly pork. It's, uh, some, it's, a free, well, it's a long process, let's put it that way. So we're gonna show you how to brine. We brine a lot of our meat up at work. It's um, something we do, we're quite fond of. It's an old school method which keeps meat uh, drying out, and uh, keeps it moist. Um, so brining, you can brine chicken, uh, your shoulders of pork, if you want to do a pulled pork, or barbecue pork, or something like that. Um, you can brine um, any type of meat really, but it works really well with pork and chicken. Um, and those types of meats. I mean, pork does tend to dry out quite quickly, um, and so does chicken. So brining it adds flavour to it. Um, it's, it's a type of preservative as well, um, and it just adds lots of flavour to it as well. So it's kind of like a marinade. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we brine our belly pork. So I've been down to the supermarket today and I couldn't get any pieces of belly pork. So I've just got these belly pork pieces so I couldn't get a slab which what we normally would use um, for our belly pork at work so we've just got these so it probably makes it a bit more uh, easier for you guys as well so we've got a pork in there for a brine itself um, we use and it sounds a bit weird but just remember it's not for actual consumption it's for preserving and marinating so we just get it so you can see So what I use is, is a mug, for that amount of belly pork that's in that tub there, I put a mug of your favourite vinegar, so this is um, a nice uh, Normandy cider vinegar, um, so the better the vinegar, better the brine really, so where you can use a sherry vinegar, a rice vinegar, you can just use normal vinegar, white wine, Whichever you want the cider obviously goes well with pork to the apples. So we've got one mug of that. And then we go a mug, same mug, with sugar. So you can just cast the sugar. Works better really with a nice brown sugar, soft brown sugar, but we just basically it's kitchen hero, so we use what we've got in the cupboard. I've got loads of granulated sugar, so I'm going to go in with that. And then salt. So you can use any salt you want. This is um, granulated stuff. So we're going to go in with half a mug of salt. It doesn't matter if it's the coarse stuff because it's going to dissolve in there. So basically what happens is the sugar, the salt and uh, the sugar they start to create like a catalyst. Um, so it's more like food science really. So you've got those mixtures in there. And what you want to do is you just want to keep whisking that up until everything's dissolved. So you can't feel any grains, um, anything like that. So what will hurry this up and also adds to the volume so you've got enough liquor. There'll be a couple of mugs of warm water as well. The same mug. So like I said, this brine works with chicken, with pork, if you're gonna do like a pulled pork or any type of roast pork. Uh, works with, like I say, works really well with chicken. Um, I would use a white wine vinegar as a toast to a cider vinegar in that one. Like I say, use what you can. That's what these videos are about. So we've got that there. We're next going to go in with some peppercorns, some black peppercorns. So you can just put some cracked black pepper in there, or pepper mill, or powdered pepper, you know, your coarse ground stuff. An ingredient that I absolutely love. Um, and you might have seen these before on my videos. The Starnays, really, really beautiful. Fragrant spice, which look like those. Very pretty little things. Smell of aniseed. 
So put a couple of them in there. If you've got any ground nutmeg or any mixed spice, which has got like your cloves, your nutmeg, um, it's good for pickling. Um, you can put it in baking, stuff like that as well. So if you haven't got any fresh nutmeg or ground nutmeg, which is what that is, or any fresh cloves or whole cloves, you could go with a mixed spice. So basically whatever you can find at the supermarket to save time, we'll go in with a mixed spice. So you roughly want about two to three teaspoons of mixed spice in there. And just keep stirring that in. So like I say, you want your sugar, you want your uh, salt and everything to dissolve in there. So this is really good guys. So if you're doing like a barbecue at the weekend or whenever, um, this is really good to have. You can have it made up. You can have it in tubs made up ready. Um, as long as it's not had the raw meat put in there at this point, um, you can have it tubbed up and made up in the fridge ready. So it's like a pickling spice in a way. Um, so like I say, for those who just joined, we're making a brine. Uh, a brine that you can use for belly pork. Um, we use it on our big pieces of belly pork at work, which we've got quite a bit of a reputation for. Um, you can use it for chicken, you can use it for pulled pork, you can use it for any barbecuing meat, um, anything like that at all. It's a really good little thing that we do, a good little tip, a little, good little recipe that we do, a uh, process, whatever you want to call it, before we start cooking at work with a lot of our meats. So we particularly use it for pork and chicken. So we've got, like I said before, from the start, we've got our cider vinegar. We could use white wine, we could use any vinegar. We've got our uh, sugar, we've got our salt in there. We've got our mixed spice. We've got some peppercorns in there. And we'll just keep mixing that up with some warm water till you can feel it on your whisk that all that sugar and all that salt's dissolved, which it has now. So it's all gone. All the spices are mixed in. So like I say, you can have that made up in a tub and just put your meat in there. So the longer it's in brine for, uh, sensibly, um, the better it um, the better it will taste. It'll stop the drying out process in a bit, like I've already said. Uh, it puts flavour in there. It used to be used as a preservative for meat before we had all the um, uh, modern technology coming in of refrigeration. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, in with the brine, into the pork. And you just literally want to make sure it's covered. So you need enough liquor in there to make sure it's covered. There's a little bit of salt and sugar at the bottom there, but it will dissolve, I promise you. So we're covering our meat up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that now um, for two days. And uh, we're just gonna leave it to, to marinade, put a lid on there, put some cling film over it, whatever you wanna do. Make sure it's completely covered. Just make sure it's all pushed in. You could always put something on top of there just to weigh it down. Uh, that you're not that bothered about like an onion or something like that just on top uh, to weigh it down and make sure it stays covered underneath, okay. So that's a basic brine. You can use this, like I say, for any barbecuing meat, roasting meat, put your joint in there on a Friday ready for Sunday. Um, you do it however you want, but we're doing the belly pork, um, starting the belly pork recipe today. Um, and we'll have another live video uh, later on today, but also we'll pick up on this in a couple of days time and I'll show you how to do our famous belly pork recipe. All right then, see you soon.